Good morning, friend. It is 2.25 a.m. in the morning, and we are headed to the airport. I'm pretty excited. I'm meeting my sister across the country, and we are going on an adventure. Just a weekend trip away to do something that is going to be pretty profound, I think, and quite the experience. So I'm excited for you to come along with me. I need to head to the airport. I don't think I've ever had a flight this early in the morning. We board at 420 and so I need to get to the airport, get through security. Normally my first thing when I get to the airport would be, after getting through security, would be coffee and maybe a little bite to eat. But I think because it is so crazy early in the morning, <laughs> I'm gonna try to get to my layover in Denver before I get any coffee or food. I have snacks in my bag and of course on the flight they'll serve beverages in case I need something, but I'm excited to go on this weekend adventure with you and my sister. I have not flown by myself in a long time, so this is kind of exciting, and I also haven't had to do a connecting flight in a long time, so we will see how well this goes. I have a connecting flight in Denver. I'm a little nervous about it there and back just because the weather's been kind of crazy. We got about an inch of snow yesterday. Today, all the snow was gone, but my mom and I, know maybe 15 years ago I think I was in high school we got stuck in Denver because of a three-foot blizzard for three days coming back from Florida and I was wearing shorts and flip-flops and thankfully we were able to get a hotel a lot of people didn't and we're in the sleeping for three days in the airport but ever since then I've always been nervous to fly through Denver in the winter so whew, getting a little tired only about four four or five hours of sleep last night. It's almost eerie how quiet it is around here. Oh yeah, security's not gonna take me very long. I'm really glad I didn't have my mindset on getting coffee <laughs> before I got here because it is a ghost town and everything is closed. That's how early I am. So we board at 420, it is now 315, I think. So I am pretty early. <laughs> are you someone who gets to the airport way early or do you like to cut it close? Josh and I are a divided household on this. He likes to cut it close. I like to not be stressed when I get to the airport. So plenty of time to go find my gate and sit down, close my eyes a little bit and try to relax. And hopefully I can get some sleep on the plane We'll see, I've never really been good at that. And I'm walking back the way I just came because I just walked past my gate. The beauties of opposite attracting, Josh and I meet usually in the middle, and so we have plenty of time and we're not crazy early. This is the plane we're gonna be boarding to head to Denver, and there was no sleep to be had on this flight. I just landed in Denver, and I've got 41 minutes to get to my next gate, which should be plenty of time. It said my app, because I downloaded the app is that I have a six minute walk and I've not had any coffee or anything to eat today. It's now, I think like 8.20. So I wanna find my gate first, then we're gonna find some coffee and something to eat. I found my gate and then I walked back over where the food was. The Starbucks line probably had 25, 30 people in it and 25, 30 people waiting for their drinks. I got in the line and I only had 30, two minutes until we started boarding. And so I was like, I don't know if I can get in that line. I'm gonna be stressed out the whole time. So then I walked to a different area for coffee. There was a coffee shop with another, you know, 20 plus people in line for it. So I just went to a little kiosk and got some coffee. And I found a place for breakfast sandwiches that didn't have a very long line, but it was like $18 for a breakfast sandwich. So I figured, you know what, I brought snacks. I'll eat those. I'm gonna meet my sister when we get to the airport. My sister moved cross country about a year ago. And so she's gonna get to the airport about two hours after I do. So I'm gonna get the rental car and things like that. So if I need something, I'll get it there. But I do have snacks for the flight. I got some coffee. The tiredness is setting in and it is so far pretty good day. I'm gonna sit here. I've got about 10 minutes now until we start boarding. And I think I'm gonna plug my phone in for a little bit and charge it while I wait. The last airplane had a charger that I could have charged my phone while we were sitting there, but my charger was in my carry-on and I didn't feel like getting that out. 
did not sleep, but I did rest a little bit on the first flight. So I'll see you when we get to our next destination. So I just landed in Charlotte and it is three o'clock Pacific time. So at home it's noon. I've been up since 1.30. <laughs> Only thing I've had to eat today is some cashews, some dried pears, and that cup of coffee. So I could use some coffee. My sister's gonna be landing in Charlotte at 5.30. So what I'm gonna do now is go run and grab the rental car. And then I think, I'm just gonna Google what's in Charlotte and maybe find a coffee shop or something. Today's Thursday, so I could use this little bit of time I have to get some computer work done. <sighs> Traveling always feels like a marathon to me. <laughs> it was interesting. I have never been in this part of the country really before. <laughs> when I used the restroom when I got off the plane, they had storm warning signs, what to do in case of a storm. We don't really get big storms that you would need to find shelter in the Pacific Northwest, so that was kind of interesting. So what I'm doing now is I am looking for the car rental. I'm just gonna follow those signs until we get to the car rental. The opportunity to go to a hog butchering class in North Carolina with my sister happened very last minute and it's pretty incredible that we were able to make this work. My sister moved across country about a year and a half ago and I haven't seen her in about a year. So this is going to be quite the profound experience that we are going to be able to share together and create lifelong memories. I only had to ask two people but I figured out where to go for the car rentals. So here we go. It's right here. This should be easy. There's nobody in here. Oh, I think I went through the wrong one. That's okay. We're gonna get it. We got the car. And now I need to figure out what I'm doing with my life for the next hour and a half. Maybe I should have just got a coffee sh or sat in a coffee shop in the airport, but I kind of wanted to get out of the airport. <laughs> so we'll see if this was a good plan or not. The car rental guy was really nice. He put my sister on the car so she can drive it too. Even though she wasn't here, she texted me a picture of her driver's license so we were able to work that out no problem, which was really nice. So at the very least, we don't have to come back to the car rental place. Whew, that 1.30 a.m. wake up time is hitting me. I'm not really hungry, surprisingly, I'm mostly just kind of feeling the tiredness. So we did go ahead and we rented a hotel. I don't know if you'd even call that. We got reservations for a hotel. So we can turn this car on. Got it on. Today's cars, they all are so different with, is it a push button? Is it a key? So sometimes I have a hard time figuring it out. This is the first time I've gone through airport, an airport and got in a rental car by myself in a really long time. Usually I have some with me during that part, but we have a reservation at a hotel. We're thinking about doing an Airbnb, but I kind of booked this such last minute that hotel just seemed easier because we will have breakfast. The place that I got has, serves breakfast, so we don't have to think about breakfast, and that will be nice. We are meeting a friend for dinner tonight. I think we're getting Thai food to dinner, for dinner tonight. So I don't wanna to eat too much, but I do need to find some sort of snack. I need to go check this car out so that they know that this is the car that I'm renting. And then I need to sit, maybe I'll do that right now. Let me, before I move, let me put this back in park. Let's see if I can find somewhere that's near me. So I have two hours, which is good, because that'll give me half an hour to get somewhere park, figure it out. Maybe, I don't know how far I am from downtown Charlotte. Maybe we'll just drive that way. I don't know if I'm actually gonna go there, but it looks like it's kind of like a little like strip mall type thing where we might be able to find some sort of coffee shop. All right, I'm gonna go check this car out. We've got a Jeep Cherokee. It's pretty comfortable. I was able to find a cute little coffee shop. There was a lot of Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks, but I figured since I've got a little bit of time to kill, I might as well see if I could find somewhere local. And my I didn't take into account that there could be traffic because it is four o'clock right now. So traffic was really bad going back to the airport. So I'm gonna give myself, it only took me about 10 minutes to get here. I'm gonna give myself probably, I don't need that, 30 minutes or so to get back to the airport just so I have time to get my sister. But I'm gonna go in here, get a little bit of computer work done, definitely get some coffee and kind of wake up a little bit. 
This worked out absolutely perfect. I had this entire coffee shop to myself and I was able to get the work that I needed to get done. And so as soon as I closed my laptop, I could kind of put that to the side and I could enjoy hanging out with my sister, learning new skills at this class, meeting new people, making new friends, and I could kind of put my work to the side and focus on the new that I was gonna learn this week. My sister just texted me and said her plane landed, which was perfect timing because I got done what I needed to get done. That coffee is absolutely delicious. Hitting the spot, I'm waking up a little bit. And so I'm gonna go pick her up. Hopefully it's perfect timing between me heading to the airport and her. I don't, I don't know if she checked a bag or not. So probably not because it's just a weekend. But if she did, hopefully it's perfect timing. So I'm gonna go get my sister. And then I don't know if we're gonna go straight to dinner or if we're gonna go to the hotel first. I guess it just depends on the timing. I met my sister at the airport and we had no troubles connecting. We just went to lunch with my friend Brie from Brie from Scratch. So if you all know Brianna from Brie from Scratch, I can link her channel below. We just had, I don't know, we, we closed the restaurant. We sat there for probably what, how long were we there, Sarah? Like two and a half, three hours maybe? Three hours. Yeah, so it was wonderful. So we just got to our hotel, we checked in. It is 10.45 here, so it's 7.45 my time and we are gonna hit the hay. We got up about an hour early so we could just drive around North Carolina before our two day hog butchery class starts. My sister nor I have spent any time in this part of the country and when we were driving last night, it was dark and so we just kinda wanted to see North Carolina a little bit and this was one of the only opportunities we were gonna have. So we were able to catch a beautiful sunrise and just see this part of the country we had never really seen before. So once we got to Meg and Ben's homestead, she fed us a delicious breakfast. So we didn't even need to worry about getting breakfast at the hotel. Meg is a phenomenal cook and she fed us three square meals two days in a row and it was pretty incredible. So day one is where the hogs are actually going to be butchered and I'm not gonna share very much of day one, but day two is where we are gonna process the hogs and turn them into their different cuts of meat. And I will share quite a bit of that process with you. Day one was an, a kind of an emotional experience for me. It's nothing I had ever experienced before. And it was pretty eye-opening and pretty profound. It was definitely something that kind of drives home the point of where our food comes from. Ben and Meg had spent the last year and a half raising these hogs on their farm, and they were so incredibly well taken care of. I have spent the last eight years learning about our food system and where our food comes from and the impacts that, you know, how the animal or the crop is raised could impact the quality and how it affects our health and the health of the planet. And so this felt like a full circle moment of learning start to finish and gaining the respect and reverence for the food we consume to fuel our bodies. And so as a, someone who does eat meat, it felt like the right thing to do to take a class like this. Now I know this wouldn't be for everybody, but it was pretty profound for me and my sister. So that was day one. So now we are gonna go into day two. Good morning. It is the next day. So yesterday was quite the experience. I have a lot of thoughts on it. I want to sit down and kind of go over you, go over with you what my thoughts are. But what we did yesterday is we got the two hogs ready for the butchery process. And this is the part that I'm really looking forward to because as someone who loves to cook, it's going to be really educational to kind of understand the different cuts of meat and where they come from and just really kind of educate myself. So today where Meg has been feeding us fantastic. Oh, it's so delicious. Oh so my good. gosh, she is a fantastic uh, yes. cook. Just oh. so seasoned yeah. well, high quality ingredients and just absolutely like. Simple, tasty, phenomenal. So good. Oh, yes. Good, we, three square meals, it was delicious yes. yesterday. So we're excited for today. <laughs> yes, so we're actually on our way there this morning to be there at nine so we can have breakfast and get going. It's gonna be a busy, busy day today. And so I'm really looking forward to it. So we'll see you when we get there. Heading into the second day of this class, we are going to actually cut down the pork into its separate cuts of meat. And this was so educational for me because when I give my butcher the cutting instructions when I order pork from a local farmer, it took me so long to wrap my head around where the different cuts came from and how one cut of meat can be turned into a bunch of different cuts of meat. 
So here is the first hog that we're going to process. And one cool thing about this class is that Meg and Ben had raised two different breeds. This first breed that we're processing was an American Guinea hog, which is a heritage breed hog that's much smaller. It weighed about 100 pounds less than the second pig that we're going to be breaking down. And here, Ben is just cut off the pork belly. And from the pork belly, you've got your ham there, and then this is the loin. And the loin can be cut into an entire roast. So once Ben removes the fat cap off this loin, you have a loin roast. Or if you cut that loin into different slices of meat, then you have what is a pork chop. So when I give my cutting instructions to my butcher, I can request either the whole loin roast or I could request it into pork chops. And this hands-on experience was so eye-opening and super educational. So what Ben and Meg decided to do with this loin, because it's small, because this was a small hog, they are gonna keep that whole and they are going to fillet it open and they're going to stuff it and roll it and then roast it as a roasted stuffed pork loin. Now, the second hog that we're gonna be processing is a more standard breed of pig and it's a bigger hog and you're gonna be able to see the size difference from the loin we just cut off and the pork belly that could be turned into bacon you're going to see the difference between the American guinea hog and the other breed. So what I'm doing here now is I am removing the fat from the skin and the skin is going to be turned into pork fried skin or pork rinds and the fat is going to be rendered down into lard. And when I request my pork fat from my butcher, they already do this process. So it was really cool to get in there and get some hands-on experience with this. And I have never requested from my butcher the pork skin because I never knew what to do with it. But Meg explained how to do it. And she actually just came out with a pork cookbook that I will link down below that has a lot of their family favorite pork recipes in it. And the way that you turn pork skin into pork rinds or chicharrones is you take the skin and you boil it until the skin is tender and then you dehydrate it and you take that dehydrated skin and you throw it into hot oil. So here Meg is frying the dehydrated pork skin and it starts out really small and when it hits the hot oil it puffs up and turns into this most delicious crunchy snack. I'm sure many of you have tried this before but this was the first time I had tried it and the crazy thing about this is the oil that Meg is frying these pork skin in is tallow that she had rendered down from a beef that she had raised on her farm. So this is farm to table cooking if there ever was any. A lot of these other goodies that she made, liver pate, head cheese, riette, scrapple, pork rinds, I had never eaten any of this stuff before. And it was amazing to try these really delicacy recipes from someone who'd put so much time and pride and effort into not only making it but raising it as well so here is that's the leaf lard that's the lard that comes off the kidneys the lard that i was cutting off earlier is just like back fat and so it was really interesting to really see side by side the two different lards so now we are processing the second hog after we ate a delicious lunch and here is the pork belly from the second hog and you can see just how much bigger this pork belly is so what ben is going to do is he's going to cut this down into three sections and then on a different day he is going to freeze this and then when he has time he'll pull it out and he'll cure this into bacon how cool is that so one cool thing about meg and ben is they are really into curing and making homemade prosciutto and copa and bacon and a lot of these things that are just things that at least i think of you only buy at the store they're making them at home which is pretty incredible so here now this is the loin from the second hog and instead of leaving this loin whole for a whole loin roast because this loin is three times the size as the last one their family wanted these into bone-in pork chops. So that's what we're gonna do with these. And I was able to get some hands-on experience cutting off some of the fat and making these into pork chops. 
So it's just so incredibly cool to have this hands-on experience. Now, I probably won't be doing this on my homestead anytime soon, but I love learning and getting in there and learning new things so that I can appreciate the entire process from start to finish and I can have a better respect for the animal, for the people that are growing my food and for the people that are butchering it and to different cuts that I'm gonna then take into my home and feed my family with. So here, this could turn into a roast. That was one thing that Ben did a good job explaining how the different cuts of meat can be turned into different things. And instead of turning this into a roast, they wanted more sausage. So I had the opportunity to remove the fat from this and I'm gonna skin this and then I can cut this up into pieces that can be turned into sausage. Another really cool thing about this is Ben made all the knives himself, and so it's just really a pretty cool thing to be able to experience on someone's farm how much effort and respect they've put into this entire process. So now I'm gonna cut these into chunks so that they can be run through the meat grinder and turned into sausage for their family. So one recipe that Meg has in her cookbook is breakfast sausage. What they like to do is grind the meat and then package it up just as ground pork. And then when they thaw it out, then they'll put their seasonings in it so that they have some flexibility. So here is all the pork, just ground pork that we were able to get. It was over 50 pounds. And then this is all the different roasts and chops and liver and things that they're going to turn into dinners and cured meats. And then they want to use everything from this hog that they spent over a year raising. So any of the bones, they're going to go ahead and slow cook this for about 36 hours, and they're going to turn that into pork stock. And then they can remove any of the meat that was left behind, and they can also freeze that and cook with that later. So nothing in this whole process goes to waste. They want to utilize every single aspect. Meg fed us an incredible final dinner. And that was one thing that my sister and I so were blown away by was Meg's cooking. We did spend some time just sitting and talking about food and flavor and recipes and cookbooks. And what really started our journey on, you know, learning where our food comes from and reigniting that passion of just enjoying food and wanting to be able to provide the best food for our families whenever possible. And that's one thing that this trip definitely reignited in me. It re reignited the passion for locally grown and locally sourced whenever possible. I know we live in a world where that's not always possible, but when it is, that is something I want to strive for when it fits into my budget and I am able to do so. And another thing that it really kind of sunk into me is, you know, how precious what we eat is and trying to reduce food waste and respecting the entire process. So I just am so grateful I had the opportunity to experience this because it was pretty profound and pretty eye-opening and just super educational. So after dinner, we headed straight back to the airport because we had an early morning call in order to get to our flights and get home on time before the crazy weather that hit most of our country. Luckily, we were able to make it home in time before the crazy winter storms hit. So I wanna thank Meg and Ben again for inviting us into their home and showing us this entire process. I will leave their channel linked down below and I will leave Meg's pork cookbook down below. Thank you, friend, for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we did something a little bit different. I hope that it was encouraging to you, and I just so appreciate the fact that you took time out of your day to spend time with me. You can see the snow is starting to hit, and it is going to get crazy. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time.